Welcome to the mind of Lance Skurve, the most creatively profound man in cyberspace. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Lance Skurve. I am really enjoying life. I'm really looking forward to my ascension into better days, absorbing more life and enjoying it. It's really a wonderful thing. You know, many of us, we look back on the past as though those are our best days. And we've had some wonderful memories. We've had some wonderful days in the past. I understand that. But to me, we die a little bit more and more each day when we can't look forward to the future and get excited about progress, ascension, and a brand new day. We should look forward to the future as the best days of our life. I can't tell anybody how to live. I can't tell anybody how to see their lives. But when you're always reaching and always striving and always happy about the promise of tomorrow, to me, that keeps you here a little better and it gives you more of a quality of life. I didn't really come here to to preach to anybody. I just wanted to share that. That was something that was put on my mind when I was in a conversation with someone the other day. Um, I've been finding different things on social media and, and I've been having fun with social media. It's fun for me once again. You know, when I started doing this stuff 23 years ago, it, it was fun. It was different. It has changed. And I will speak about that. I'll speak about a few things. And this might not be a 10 hour show. But I'll bring down some points because I always like to be thought provoking and I share my mind honestly with you. I'm not going to dress it up. I know sometimes I step on toes, but it's not done venomously. It's just done out of love. And you never have to wonder how I feel about the issues. But then again, this is the age of censorship. So I have to be careful how I say things on certain platforms, even though this is going to go across multiple platforms. Right. I found something on Reddit. Reddit, R-E-D-D-I-T. Many people are not down with Reddit. I'm down with a lot of different platforms, and I'm really stimulated by the things that I see that I'll be talking about. I'm not going to just talk about the same old rah-rah black people we have to make up, wake up, make up. Yeah, we have to make up, too. That was a Freudian slip. My Freudian slips are on point. I'll say that. We have to wake up. We have to make up. Wake up to make up that's all we do <laughs> they should do a remake on that song and, and make it like that right but this was about this was discussion on on reddit i'm not even sure i i, I screenshotted it just to save but i didn't save the actual page name on reddit the group that was there i'll try to dig that up later on and share it with you but i'm going to read out something it was really uh Interesting what one person commented and said, and this discussion was about religion as opposed to science, and they had discussed hmm, the vaccine, uh, the mask, those things, but the people speaking about that were defending that, but this person came on in um, and debunked a lot of things. So I'm going to say it as it was because they didn't say any catchphrases that would get the algorithms to throw me out like a drunk start in trouble in a nightclub. Okay. Cause they will do that. But it was very interesting what he said. Um, this person, I don't even want to say the name. I'll give them credit. Their name is booty meat balls. I never heard of a name like that before booty meat balls. Right. Um, and he was coming against the people who brought up a lot of religious quotes and, and, and belief in the system and you need to do this and that, or they were against uh, the vaccines and different things, right? Okay, here we go. Um, this is what he said. And he made a few typos, so I might mess up. People will believe every piece of BS they hear in the church or on TikTok, but are skeptical of science. They just drink every drip drop of ancient a alien anunnaki egyptian nonsense without question or mindlessly believe everything said over a pulpit i just don't get it the sumerian and egyptian religions are over five thousand years old about the same as semitic religions like judaism christianity is about half that age and we act like the age of these religions is somehow proof of their legitimacy. But I say the opposite is true. 
In 200 years, since the start of the Industrial Revolution, science and technology has cured some of the most deadly diseases known to man, as in polio, tuberculosis, malaria, etc. Invented an instant global telecommunication service, multiple ones in fact, and put a man on the moon. Now, I might argue with that one. Things these religions couldn't achieve in millennia, science achieves in decades. Now, I have another screenshot I have to see here, so let me go to that to continue the dialogue. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, where are we now? Okay, here we go. Things religions talk about as parables and miracles, science has turned into reality. Like, these are real miracles, and we just take them all for granted. Make it make sense. Like, what has Anunnaki done for humanity? Where are the strides? Where are the miracles? What is your faith and obsession based on, and why? Because Norman Borlaug saved the lives of billions of brown people with GMO rice and grain in India, Africa, and the Middle East. That's a real miracle. And science doesn't require blind faith. They have the receipts and they appear reviewed. Now, I'm not going to say I agree or disagree. I'm just, I just want to read that out to you because he has a point, even if it's partial. So many of us, we look at TikTok, we look at YouTube, we look at Instagram, and we get caught up in this fervor. Is there proof of what certain people are saying? I agree with that. We seem to suck up every little piece of, of unproven and some proven now, okay? Piece of information and we run with it. And I will say, with many of us who are melanated people, we do run a bit far with the ancestor talk. We do run a bit far with these altars, and this is me talking now, with these altars, with the ancestors, with this, with that. It borders on mental illness, and I speak sometimes like that, but not in that way. We look and we talk about the ancestors like it's Superman flying through the sky, and we're going to call on the ancestors to do this and do that. But that Superman of an ancestor never shows up. But there's so many people who are caught up with the rhetoric that these frauds and these charlatans, they run their mouth because we want to feel as though we have some backup and we have some power. You know what the power is? In our unity. I'm not saying wake up. I told you I'm not going to say that ever again. So they, Please, black people, we need to wake up. No. I'm going to say it again on damn near every video. If you want to stay asleep, stay right where you are. We're out of our minds. What has it done for you? This mystery googly gog that we talk. Even with the religions like this man was saying. What has it done? Am I questioning a superior supreme being? No, I'm not. Because just like on an Instagram post that I was shared, there was a high profile comedian who was asked about the higher levels and what, what keeps him going and what he believes in. He's what he knows in. He says, God is everywhere. Look at the plant, the tree over there. Photosynthesis, taking the rays of the sun, turning it into food in the form of the fruits and vegetables that we can consume that are tailor-made for our body. If that's not God, and I'm saying God is the sum total of all systems created by an energy, a force. I'm not saying it in the European way. I'm not saying it in the religious way. I'm just saying it for brevity purposes. Don't get me wrong. But we get so caught up in this stuff and the other stuff is looking us in the eye. And it's true. In the last 200 years, science has done so much 
and enhanced receipts. Am I saying to turn your back on the supreme being? No, but true science is an extension of the supreme being because we learn how to navigate what has been created and work along with the laws of what has been created by the supreme being. But that doesn't fit well with the TikTok prophets that look at other people's TikTok videos and YouTube videos and just repeat and spew forth the same thing when they don't even have their own damn lives together. If you poked and probed and really knew who these people were, leading you astray, you must pray to the ancestors and you must do this. And, and two years ago, they were a Jehovah Witness, telling you something about Jehovah Witness. Two years ago, they, they were a Muslim. Two years before that, they was a Buddhist. They're feeling around. This is their latest manifestation, and social media gives a platform to these idiots. I'm going to say it. I'm not going to say it in detail. I knew a young lady. She wasn't of legal age to be an adult. She had a very strict mother. It's a be very beautiful young lady, shapely, beautiful and stuff. She was going to be the target of a lot of men. She looked over her, but she was too strict with her. And the religious thing was very strong in the household. She just wanted to go out to a party and just dance a little bit around the corner. She wanted to do this so bad. Her friends were there. There was no drugs, no smoking, no nothing, nothing bad there. I can attest to that. I passed through that party. It was a very reputable, clean situation. And her mother wouldn't let her go. She couldn't take it anymore. She slipped out, climbed out the window and went around the corner and threw her back out. Slipped disc. The mother said, oh, oh, that's God punishing you. The girl walked so crooked with so much pain. Are we going to let the Lord heal you up? It never happened. She walked around crooked for decades. Her, her sense of womanhood, you know, I mean, you're not just going to walk around vain. She didn't want to walk around naked, but you want to be a woman when you're a woman. Damn it, you have so many men who want to to be women what's up with that you mean a young woman can't be a woman doesn't mean she wants to titillate or whatever but you know you're walking down the street and the man you know how you, you look very nice and you feel good and you feel sensuous and it's part of your development there's nothing wrong with that but she went so many years heartbroken and she felt so unattractive she already had to deal with the ignorance of her own people who tried to tell her and the younger folks too, you know, the whole stigma when you're darkly complected and you, you're not as attractive as the high yellow, lighter skin, whatever, that foolishness. You check my record. I love me some chocolate. That's all I ever dealt with was chocolate. Yes, I dealt with a few lighter skinned women in my years. Yes, I did. But they were black. But all my life, the real serious ones, baby, Bring me that sweet chocolate. Yes. Nothing, nothing, no, nothing else does it for me. Sorry. Don't hate anybody else. They're all beautiful women of other races, but <laughs> give me the chocolate. Go into the ice cream store. What flavor do you want? We have new mango. We have a strawberry mixture with raspberry. No, 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 no. Just give me the chocolate, baby. Give me the chocolate. Ain't nothing like that good. <sighs> sweet. Nectar from the chocolate. Let me shut up. I'm getting a little too beyond PG-13. So she had to deal with that. And she was very beautiful, shapely, pretty face, beautiful complexion, velvety, glistening. But she didn't feel it because of that, because of the religious foolishness religious foolishness. You know you're very religious when you brush your teeth every day. You know you're very religious when you, you go to the bathroom and the number two happens and you wipe up and clean up. That's something you do on a regular basis. Church and religion is something you do on a regular basis. But what about the real nitty gritty thinking outside the box on what is? I'm not saying it's all about man, but true science studies the creations of God. It doesn't go against it. Now, we have some wicked people who study science to corrupt it, to knock off populations. And you know what I'm talking about. 
to twist it around, population control, targeting races of people, targeting uh, 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 geographical areas where the people are, where their resources, and we want to knock them out and wipe them out so we can get those resources. Yes, we have that. But the science is not wrong. It's their attitude toward the science and what they do with it. There are police officers out here, and you know how it is in America. But I can't say every police officer is bad. I grew up with many that were decent men who did their jobs. And they would never think to pull their weapon and point it at anybody unless they felt their life was threatened. And I know some who never had to pull their weapon at all. It's not the gun. It's the person behind it. You can take away all the guns and somebody can walk up next to you with a bad intent to snuff you and take your life. Got to watch the words I use and take an ink pen and jam it in your eye so deep it goes into your brain. An innocent pen with bad intentions. But you have a good woman, a good man who's in law enforcement and they have good intentions and they will never even hurt a fly. You see what I mean? So it's not the actual science, it's what's behind it. So now we're in a day and age where the science is twisted and we can't trust it, but there have been things that have been cured and wiped out. So we can't not trust a person who indulges in the understanding of God's creation. Let's look at it that way. If you're not doing this in a proper way, in a righteous way, in a just way, so that no harm is done to someone. If you're not doing it that way, then you don't need to do it at all. If you are, that's a good thing. And the writer of this, <laughs> Booty Meatballs, he was dead on. He was dead on. And I wish more of us would think this instead of following behind the social media prophets the social media prophetesses, the people who try to look like prophets from back in the day and talk, and you don't know who the hell they are. Would you go to the pharmacy and it's a person who just walked in off the street with you and they get behind the counter and tell you what you should take? Who are you? Did you go to school for this? Anybody with a camera, with a microphone, they could jump up on here and sound convincing. And appeal to your emotions. And you suck it down. Hook, line, and sinker. Think about it. The Anunnaki's. And, and I'm not knocking that. It very well may be true. All I'm saying. Instead of getting sidetracked by the smoke and mirrors. Right? Let's talk about the science of God. Because everything in God's creation is decent and in order. No mere man can create unlimited snowflakes that are different, that are not, no two are the same. I'll stretch it longer. There's no printing machine for snowflakes. So all the snowflakes that ever were are not like what was today. All over the world, from the beginning of time to the end of time, and the time is not going to end. Time is an artificial construct on this level, so it won't ever end, but that's man's measurement of it. But the ascension, the other side, the next level is timeless. Kind of confusing, isn't it? <laughs> well, buckle up the seatbelt and enjoy the ride because no one person knows everything. So we're all a little ignorant in something. And this is why I titled this particular segment, which may end any minute right now. I'm just working off of inspiration and maybe some fumes because I had a long, productive, prosperous day. But the title is, Your Ignorance Has Created a Bed That You Must Now Lay In. Why do I say that? Because we are so ignorant we are so trusting. A person can have a makeover and we forget the recordings and the videos of them calling us out of our name. Yes, I'm talking about Joe Biden and I'm not a political dude. 
These entities are just the marionette puppets for the so-called elites that hide behind the curtains and pull the strings. Who doesn't know that? Joe Biden don't give a damn about you. And I'm going to say this too. And this is part of a conversation that I had the other night. I thought about it and maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going to think out loud and I'm going to share my thoughts with you. This Joe Biden senility stuff, him being senile and, and can't remember things. I'm not buying it. I think it's a ploy. I think what is happening is all by design. But we're blaming Joe Biden. And he's playing the senile role. And he's getting a pass. So anything that he does that's cockamamie off the chain, oh, well, you know, he's a little senile. And he gets off the hook. That's just like somebody committing a crime, murdering somebody. Temporary insanity. I lost my mind. No, you knew good and damn well what you were doing most of the time. So we play these roles to get through these loopholes. So they put this stuff out on social media that is halfway out of his mind so that this is why he's doing what he's doing. No, what he's doing is by design by, and I hate to call them elites because they're not elite over me. We're all elite over those little low vibrational entities. But for the sake of being on par with what most people understand, I'll say it that way. I'm not saying they're better than me because they're not. But the elite wants what's happening to happen because they want to destroy America. It's a very shrewd plan. And that way the government doesn't have to take the blame. And the elites won't be exposed in their mind. Joe Biden is doing it and he's senile. But yet and still, they know something's coming. And what's that? Well, they're selling their shares in their companies, the stocks, the crypto, everything. They're building bunkers. Now, we know the people on top in politics, the president, he's always going to be covered. They always have, they have secret service for life. They have, everything's paid for for life. So they get in their bunkers and underground and other politicians also. So do they really give a damn about us? They get in the bunker. Why? Why, why, why don't you tell us why? They're not going to tell us why. But they try to cover their own behinds. And they don't give a damn about you. But we're too ignorant to understand it. And it's in our ignorance that we have created a bed that we will soon be forced to lay down in. And everything is going to come flooding our brains. And we're going to be so sorry that we didn't listen to our intuition, that we didn't listen to our gift of discernment, that we didn't listen to our third eye. Whatever you want to call it, it's the same thing. We get so caught up and what we call, well, my religion, I, I, I'm Methodist, and hey, you're Baptist, and that one's Pentecostal, and oh, you were atheist over there, uh, uh, and that was a, a Muslim, and this was Buddhist, and please, I'm so sick of you with this foolishness. Don't even subscribe to this new channel if you come up with that foolishness. The same foolishness that people who can't even discipline and control themselves, they want to be voodoo priestesses now. You got a mental sickness. If you had any power in your life, it would be evident. It would be evident. But most of y'all got no power. And you run to the cuckoo stuff and nothing changes. I'm looking at it here in the motherland. Some people use uh, 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 the, those things, the juju, as a potential weapon. Well, I, I know Juju and I. Negro, you ain't got no money in your pocket. You begging everybody. You, 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 and I'm not equating money with uh, intelligence or positioning on a divine level. But you got these people who are still talking to Juju stuff and trying to threaten and act and whatever. But they're doing real things to undermine you, but they want to blame the Juju. See, I am powerful because I, I am responsible for this. And that. please, coincidence. You got these entities online screaming and yelling and 
and the spiritual this and that and whatever, and they still living in the same funky place in Brooklyn where they are, frustrated. Not putting Brooklyn down, I just threw a little curve at somebody. What are you doing? Time is moving on. You've done nothing concrete. And I'm not putting myself on a pedestal. I didn't come out, out here on some old, oh, the ancestors and all this and all that. No, you have to plan. You have to know how much you're working with in your pocket, the science of it all. Godly principles, yes, but the science of it all. How are we going to build this? How are we going to make the leap? How are we going to plan so that we don't have to depend on uh, uh, make a plate of food and put it at your table uh, for the ancestors? You all have lost your mind. Only thing you got coming there is the ants, not the ancestors, because they're going to eat that food up. At some point, you got to take it and throw it out. And there's so many of us who are into the escapism I'm into the science of God. Not the mentally sick, twisted, reaching and, and trying to seem or make sense out of nonsense. Our ignorance has created a bed that we must now lay in. Because these illusions and delusions do nothing for our life. Well, I, I, you wear this bracelet and, and, and this is what's going to happen. And you're still the same old bad bodied person, bad minded person, peeping and looking on Clubhouse and YouTube and Rumble and Twitter. And, oh, oh, reach out to me. Oh, get the hell out of here. Ten years from now, it'll be the same thing if you happen to be alive. What are you doing to ascend yourself so that it's an easier transition? Because we're not going to be here forever. News bulletin, we're not going to be here forever. Some of us ain't going to be here next year, next five years, whatever. And even if we live long, some of us are not going to have a quality of life because we're too damn ignorant. Now, let me bring this down to another point. You see up top, it says, let us welcome our migrant newcomers. You see, Joe Biden wants to say newcomers. Like we're just one big happy family in America. One big happy family. What has he done for you lately? Or what has he done for you at all? The one before him, as far as a Democrat is concerned, I mean, I'm not into the terminology because none of them give a damn about us. Barack Obama, he made sure the rainbow posse made it through. He made sure that Latinos made it through. And what is that term? There's so many so-called Latinos that look like me that have coarse hair and a wide nose and, and, and thick lips, but there's so many of them that don't want to be who they are, so they get the new category. <laughs> this is so crazy. That's so crazy. What did Paul Mooney say with, about the term Latino? <laughs> it's not nothing separate. They're just Negroes who know how to swim. <laughs> But we find so many reasons to separate ourselves from ourselves. And we've been conditioned not to work along with ourselves. So we gravitate toward ignorance over unity. Unity that we have to sacrifice sometimes if we don't agree with the whole, but we unify. But we look right at this point. I'm so frustrated. I turned 61 years old in April next month, 2024. I'm sick of saying it. I'm sick of seeing it. I grew up in a revolutionary family in a very re revolutionary, revolutionary, I'm stuttering, revolutionary place in the world in a revolutionary time. And I'm so disappointed. And I keep saying this. It's like, Lance, you say the same thing every, well, look, if you're hungry, you're going to keep, mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, I'm hungry. You're not just going to bust out not not having no food. Oh, I'm full now. Because I imagined it. I don't deal with imagination unless I create something. But once something is created, as far as a, a good community, as far as something that is that has been needed to be achieved, and sometimes a mess, whatever it is, I'm going to call it what it is. I acknowledge that. But all this stuff in our heads that has not manifest, we talk. Look, like I said before, one of our children may get shot and killed either by a police officer or by somebody who looks like them. And we're up in arms. We have to change things. We need to unite. Whatever. You go to the rally. 
You get to handpick black leaders who never won a black leader election, like an Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson. Remember, just using their names because you, you know it. And they say their little nursery rhymes. They make up stuff and rhyme. We, are, we love rhymes. When it's time to take action, rhymes will sedate us. It's time that we get in line. We need to unify, and it's time that we get online. Oh, yeah, I messed up. I said in line, but yeah, online. And that's too, too many of you are online. Sucking up all kind of twisted ideologies. Gullible. See, social media for many is the ultimate speed bump from a true revolution. A, a true revolution, a word that means change. But we're not prepared. So we have to lay in this bed that we created out of ignorance. Because if we don't see that the senile Joe Biden, which I don't believe so. I don't believe he's senile. That's part of the game. The game in us. Open up the borders and letting them on in. Someone's knocking at the border. Somebody's ringing the bell. Joe Biden says, open the borders and let them in. You give them the cell phones, give them the apartments, and now I'm hearing that they're allowing them to be armed. Allowing them to be armed. And I was watching a video on Rumble about a border control agent. He was there for 27 years as a person who worked the borders. And he said the system is so jammed up when you want to vet someone and check their background that it does not work. It's too slow and there are too many people ass assessing. I said assessing. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is too. There are too many people pulling on that computer system. They're not getting anything right. You got stone cold killers coming here. Some that were free, some that were locked up. And also what he said, when you have these hotels and these structures that house many of the migrants, the drug cartels have ways of getting drugs all up and down all over the country through these places. But the way he said it was so convincing. And he was upset because he's saying this place is being carved out, gutted, set up for destruction. America, yes. And I'll also say it, and many of us are catching on to it, but the migrants are there to snuff us out as melanated people who would much rather watch a reality TV show, who would much rather go on and get your hair done, who would much rather take your hard-earned money or your illegal money or whatever it is, is kind of money and go buy that brand new car so you can look good driving down the street. And these people who are coming here, many have lived very rough lives and will outwork you. They will outlast you. They are hard. They are tough. Whether they are criminal or not, they're coming to do the do. And they ain't going to back up. But yet and still, there's no money for reparations. But then again, we make so much money. I'm not saying we're not owed that, but if we're going to sit down and wait, after everybody gets pushed to the front of the line, we're damn fools. We are damn fools. All of a sudden, stop Asian hate. Who hating on Asians? Who's been more hated than, than, than black people in America and all over the world, African people? Used and abused and hated just for who we are. Because they know who we are and we don't know who we are and everybody wants to be us. Oh, yeah, nobody wants to be. Listen, just like Paul Mooney said, we're the most imitated. Our swag, who we are, the magic powers that we have, we can only use them when we use them to help other people. But for our own self, we've been trained and conditioned not to work with each other, to work against each other. And it's evident. We might have some who are successful, who have the right mindset. I'm not saying none of us at all. Well, Lance, you know, over here, we work fine. But it's not the majority. 
We should be selfless, but so many of us are narcissists now. We want the attention. We don't like to see anybody get attention, so we want to take it from them and destroy them. We don't give a damn about anybody else. We want our chance at the podium. We want all the applause. Negroes, and I've seen it on social media. This is why I'm backing up. I'm kind of backing up. I do it when I want to do it, when I want to do it, when I do it. I want to write something later on. I could do two or three more shows and some shorts and push like, no, I'm not. Nah, mm. I'm really enjoying life. I am not going to give up the sunset and the sunrise and the long walks in the backyard with my toes out in the sand, in the dirt or along the beach. I think I want to go to the beach tomorrow. I might take a little videotape, a video recording of it. I mean, I'll, I'll still do that. But I'm not going to sit here and just stress myself like this for Negroes who want, will turn around and come against you. Oh, he's doing too good. I need to have a channel like that. I need to. You know, no, I'm not competing with nobody. I don't, I, don't, I don't want that mentality around me. I'd rather just be a hermit, a reclusive soul. More and more, the more I think that way is the more I'm enjoying myself. I say, man, I got all this creative energy. Why am I giving it away for free? I don't get the support anyway, but I'm doing things that will get the support. Things I like, a lot of difference that I like. So now this has to take a back seat because, like I said, I'm not going to spend my life waking up until telling folks to wake up. I'm going to say it again. Malcolm X had no support when he was killed. Black folks didn't support him. He died penniless. Now, I know he was the kind of guy who was like, I'm not doing this for money. Right. We're not doing this for money. And I'm not even trying to compare myself to a Malcolm X. But we all have the responsibility to be little versions of Malcolm X in our own way because he gave his life. That's the responsibility that we have. We have a responsibility to be little Marcus Garvey's because he gave his life. And even though you may not manifest exactly what Malcolm or Marcus did, you can do it in this lifetime in your own way in your lane with the talents and unique abilities that God has given you. But we don't do it. And look at the world the way it is. It's illegal to be a black man and be heterosexual and, 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 and be straight and be faithful and be a family man who's upright, who's raising a family. Oh, they won't say it, but that's illegal. Why with the ads on TV, you see everything else except the black family. You see a white man with the black woman and the white woman with the black man and every other type of race and every type of pairing. You look at the H, what's the HGTV? Where they have the home improvement stuff and the real estate and the properties. And you have, you know, Adam and Steve. <laughs> oh, this is my husband. <laughs> We're looking to buy a house and... Oh, please. Did I say anything hateful? No. It is what it is. What is going on in the world? Just like way, way back in the day, I remember people from back then who were older and they said, I don't, what kind of world are we living in? Well, some of those who are deceased, who are living way back then, that I know are older than, I know they're not with us anymore, catapult them into 2024 and let them see what's going on. They'd really say that now, now, wouldn't they? Even some of the youngsters, compared to me, right? I mean, I'm not 90 years old. I'm a youngster to those people. 90 year old man is a young man. I was like, okay, I felt like I, felt like I was 14 again. <laughs> it's all relative. But even some of the youngsters are seeing the change. Everything is accelerating so fast. The love is sucked out of the air. Where's the love? We had more love back in the 70s, back in the late 60s, and I'm quite sure earlier than that, even though we had wars, we had racism, we, we, we had cheating, husband cheating wives, we had everything we have now, but now it's more amplified. It's something that's off the scale. This trajectory where we find ourselves in 2024, you would have never guessed it.
20 years ago, well, maybe 20 years ago, because 20 years ago, I was on online saying, my, saying the same stuff. And, oh, Lance, you're a conspiracy theorist. It's not going to be that way. Look around you. Put on the news. Don't listen to me on my old stuff on SoundCloud. You can get all the classic episodes of Lance Gerber on SoundCloud. Sorry, hackers. You didn't get that one. And you won't. And if you go back to those classic episodes, you'll see I was talking the same stuff. I'm not trying to say I'm Nostradamus. I'm some prophet that I, I can predict. But Stevie Wonder could see it. Even Stevie Wonder can see it. And he saw it. Look at some of the old songs that he sung. Let him have his peace and his joy in his life in these years. Let me have the same. I'm not going to wait around I'm going to always talk about these things to a point, but there's no sense of urgency when I see that there's so much ignorance and rejection of all things righteous. Most people out here are hedonistic. They're out here looking for pleasure more than sacrifice. They're out here being want, wanted to be in a luxury situation and not come out of their comfort zone just a little bit to sacrifice for the whole Tithe your life force, people. Forget about the tithes to keep a pastor or a preacher in alligator shoes or that extra condo where his women are living that he can go dip by on the Tuesday night, girl, I'm coming by. Maybe it might be some young boys up in there, too. Who knows? This is bizarro world. You got pastors who've called themselves power bottoms. Imagine that big walrus in front of me bent on, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a power bottom. You know what I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. Come on, baby. Because <laughs> I can't say certain things on certain platforms anymore. That's why you got to get on over to landscurve.com. You see my image right there. You see the website right there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to write something off the chain tonight. And that's what I'm going to write my stuff off the chain. And they're still going to try to find a way to, to, to join things again. We have to come after him. You can't come after me in my house. It's my house and I live here. Landscurve.com, y'all. It's my house and I live here. I'll behave myself when I'm on, on other platforms, but I'm going to let it all hang out. You're going to see a different Landscurve. I'm not going to be polite no more. No, I'm a good guy. You know I'm a loving person. You know I respect my sisters and respect my brothers. But but if you don't know, you're going to think I'm just a piece of rotten uh, crap. But you know what? You'll, you'll get the point. This is no time for pulling punches no more. It's no time for the light sparring. We're in the real fight now. We are right at the cusp of some things happening. Could you imagine? This is the third month of 2024. We're leaving out of it soon, another week or so, right? But look how much has happened. Look how much is accelerating. Look how much stuff is coming out. And we're in La La Land because the social media thing has us in this dream world. That when reality comes at us, it's like we don't believe it. It's like it just doesn't hit us. They have officially said years ago that we have had alien contact. What does that mean? Aliens from under the water, from outer space, or from a different dimension. And we have AI all of a sudden. Where did it come from? We have hologram technology. When they have the Jesus in the sky or the aliens in the sky battling it out and the holograms running past you looking like aliens. What was that thing in Miami? Was it a test? A test run? Maybe people did have cell phones and tried to videotape it and couldn't capture it because the way it was projected, technology had it where it had a cloaking device where it could not be recorded. Think about these things. Whatever we get as far as technology, we get the hand-me-downs. Whenever you give some hand-me-down clothes to someone, maybe a, a family who's struggling and has kids, they're good clothes. They're not rags. But you're not giving me your best. You don't go to the department store, go to the mall, and spend top dollar and say, well, here's some hand-me-downs. Just remove the tags. They do the same thing. This technology has been around from the late 60s and 70s. We walk around pushing our chest up, Talk about, yes, I got the latest phone and the cell phone. Don't even know the technology that's on the inside, but because it says this number, this designation, and it has a nice little champagne color to it, 
It's the new iPhone for 2025. It's the new so-and-so Toyota, whatever, for 2025, but it's still 2024. And our egos are so tied up to stuff that we don't see how we're being pushed out of society because of our lack of unity and our ignorance to push and invest our time into things that won't help us. <laughs> the ancestors, the Anunnaki, uh, who can help us now? We can help us. We are the president of our lives. We are the ones who have the steering wheel in our hands and we're looking to everything else, but everybody else, they got it going on because they're unifying. Some will kill each other. We understand that, but not like we doing it. Not like we're doing it. Killing each other over stupidity. Killing each other over material goods. Jealous of the next man because his house is bigger. Jealous of the next man because you never took care of yourself and you look like a fat pig and you mad at the brother who took care of himself and don't look his age. What kind of BITCH kind of men do we have? What kind of BITCH men do we have? Let me tell you something. I'm going to be bold and say what I say. I'm not going to cross any lines. Real men, not males who are trying to be men in drag. A man is different from a male. When a real man who is strong, who has wisdom, who is upright, who is respectable. Let's take a Malcolm X and bring him up to the present time. Who will tell you the truth, but will always respect you, but will not allow you to put any hand on any one of his. When you go around in your community and people feel that vibration coming from you or whoever that real man is. He doesn't have to prove, yeah, well, you know, I'm hanging down to my knee. Oh, look, I, I, I made six figures. Not that fake superficial stuff. A real man can move in silence and you'll feel his presence. A real man moves about in his community and his mere presence will heal those not instantaneously, but it will be so intriguing because we don't have real men around in the numbers that we used to have. That's like trying to hold an appliance together in your home, a fridge, a washer, a dryer, or even a vehicle or something with no screws. Right? It's going to fall apart. What if your clothes had no thread? By the time you walk down the street, halfway down the street, your backside is out. So this is why we're unraveling. And I'm not going to forget the real women. But the real women need the real man. We need each other. We have to interlock. We're not in competition. We have our roles. But when you pull one out, either one, we collapse and in our ignorance, we have created a bed that we must now lay in. And that bed is not a good bed at all because we haven't been doing as we should. Time is flying. Listen, 2024, 2024. We were freaking out about 2000. Now it's 2024. 2030 is going to get here quick. I'm not walking off time because I'm always in the here and now. I project for the future. I plan for it, but I'm doing what I have to do now because the future is not going to arrive in a good way, personally, professionally, and collectively, unless we do what we have to do now to say, I made a step today, which is a building block for the future that will last even when I'm gone from this plane. But we don't think about that. We're so busy trying to run away from the pain of sacrifice. And not only just to pleasure. Pleasure is nice and balanced. But you have to earn your pleasure. But we going after the decadent, low-down stuff. That is sweet. 
Now let me let me let me just correct that now. Not correct it, but just explain it more. There is a sweetness to sin. You eat orange, say, man, the orange is sweet. The orange is good for you. But somebody give you a bottle of Coca-Cola and you thirsty. If you don't know no better that it's not good for you, say, man, I was thirsty and this thing is sweet. But its sweetness is counterfeit. Its sweetness requires B vitamins to digest. So as you drink that down, you're robbing yourself of the nutrition that you already have stored in you, but the orange is giving it to you. And the different activities that we do, brothers, you know, it's nice to make love to your woman. But most guys will settle F-U-C-K in any woman. The act is the same. But the nutritional value of that on a spiritual, mental, and physical level is something completely different. Our ignorance has created a bed that we must now lay in. Our ignorance. That's why we're sitting up in the clinic. Because we were stupid to understand that there's still things running around here that would love to attack a clean bloodstream. Our ignorance. We don't want to budget the money that we work hard for. And so we find ourselves out on the curb because we thought other things were more important than paying our mortgage or paying our rent or paying the car note. Now you're back on the bus stop. Trying to hide. Our ignorance. You had a good woman, but you couldn't leave the other ones alone. Now you can't find one. And the ones you ran with, you realize weren't good women. They were just... Temporary playthings trying to get out of you what they can get out of you. Our ignorance. You can't even take a walk to the store. You got to drive. Now you're eating food and getting big and fat. And now you're sitting up in the hospital. Sick. With something that didn't have to happen. You could have avoided it. You were willingly ignorant. If we would just do what we're supposed to do in this life personally and as a collective, these so-called elites with the puppet called a president, Joe Biden, they could not pull off what they're pulling off for you who built this country. And I'm, my fight is with my people, but I can't ignore what is right. We got Americans who worked regardless of the race all their lives and paid taxes that built these structures and these migrants are showing up and Joe Biden wants them called the newcomers. The newcomers what? Make them pay taxes. You're giving them all of this stuff. You can't even take care of the homeless veterans that you have sleeping under trestles and overpasses laying in their feces, not because they want to do that, but some may have mental issues, emotional issues, spiritual issues, but they gave their life in a patriotic manner. And you who are rulers in, in politics, look at them like fools because you would never allow your children to fight on the front lines. And you give them hell when they go to the VA with a medical issue. You make them wait long hours. You make them fill out forms. You make it seem like they're wrong for going there. That was part of the deal. You've got a lot on your hands, America. And there's a lot of things that you're doing right now. But many of us, we are so ignorant to the game because they push the lower vibrational pleasures that are sweet but they're not nutritious on us so to get the rush we got to keep, keep going back keep going back taking all things natural and twisting it around GMO foods and foods with all types of weird concocted sugars that are put in there to make you addicted the natural desire for sexual contact now it's constant we wake up with wake up with it on our mind we go to bed with it we masturbate and ain't no bullets in the gun and we wonder why we can't get it up we're abusing ourselves we wonder why we can't get that feeling with that woman because we're so desensitized 
But then we want to get all kind of things to inject into our bloodstream and pills, little blue pills and all kind of things to get the blood flow back in the penis. It's not the penis. It's your mind and it's your spirit and it's your twisted emotions. Because you're putting too much on your woman, man. All this airbrushed, well-lit, porn on up, made up. She can't compete with that. Your mind is blasted with that stuff and you want her to be all of that that you see when she's asleep and you're just watching that porn hub, red tube, ex hamster. Don't we all know the names? Come on, fellas. Don't be the. I know them. You know them too. You want to commute when nobody can see your phone looking at porn, hoping nobody looks over your shoulder. Well, hell, they got some sites on Instagram that might as well be porn. Our minds are so twisted. We have all young ladies out here thinking that just because they're a female or a young lady that everything is supposed to be given to them. They're supposed to meet some man who has a nice six pack and driving a luxury vehicle. And he spots her out of the crowd and he swoops her up and takes care of her for the rest of her life. And she's shopping every weekend. She's going to the beauty parlor every weekend. She's buying luxury items and luxury clothes and they're taking exotic trips with it. Do you really? 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 What happened to two people building together? But you cock your legs open too early and have three and four different kids from five and six different baby daddies. How that works, I don't know. Musical chairs with your vagina. And you wonder why big chunks of your life are taken away. We make the wrong decisions. We're ignorant. And lots of us, I'm convinced. There are a lot of us who have book sense but we don't have the common sense and we are willingly ignorant i truly feel this <laughs> that, that we ignorance is truly bliss you don't want to know because it's so blissful to be ignorant isn't it something black people all people who are ignorant you ignore things you want to be in la la land you want to believe the lies from these politicians and the lies from these pastors and all of these other weird religions, weird religions. You must take this and bite into it and swallow it. And right before you die, you'll know it. What kind of weirdo stuff? Weirdo energy, y'all. We off the chain. People believe in all kinds of stuff. When you believe in things that you don't understand, you will suffer. Super, I can't sing it, but you know, I know that song for so long. Stevie Wonder was telling you from way back then. There ain't no hope. When you're willingly ignorant, your ignorance has created a bed that you must now lay in. And as these times move forward into the future and you see what is coming and you start to feel it. You got to understand you had a chance to change it. You had a chance to back out of it. You had a chance to make a difference in your life and set yourself up instead of listening to everybody else. Everybody else, some of them set themselves up. Some of them are suffering. They can't help you now. Or maybe you think they can. But when crap hits the fan, especially in America, we're moving closer and closer to it. That's why the distractions are e even more. All of the P, Diddy, Diddy, Jakes, and all, and you sucking this thing up like a pig, not knowing that there's something else going on that you need to pay some mind to. This country that you built, it ain't yours. But we're arguing if we're FBA and ADOS and indigenous and Pan Africanist and blah, 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 Latino, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm Cuban, I'm not black, I'm, 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 I'm identity issues. Narcissistic people want attention and that's all. They want that dopamine rush every time they get somebody to like or subscribe to them. I do what I do for what the reason I do it for. Regardless, I don't care if nobody likes me. I don't care if nobody subscribes. There's going to come a day very soon. I won't even be on these things. I want to enjoy. You know why? I don't want to be like Malcolm X and give my life and leave my family broke. And if he had a chance to think while the bullets were going through his body, 
I didn't have to do this. I could have given more time to my family. I could have given more time to my children. But I foolishly thought that I can invest in inspiring black people. But oh, how I was. I'll give my 10%, but I ain't giving no more. I got to keep some for myself because this life is a gift and I'm, I'm not going to leave it unopened. I want to see the potential in it and I'm going to enjoy it before I leave. Much love to you all. Like, share, and subscribe. Check us out on SoundCloud and make sure you always go to Lanskirt.com. Peace. Make sure to go to landscurve.com, an online magazine established in 2001, containing written articles, thousands of talk shows and discussions, cutting edge cartoons, as well as erotic expressions and tasteful adult photography. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Once you get a taste of the world of Landscurve, Trust me, you'll be back for more. Landscurve.com. Bold, raw, and uncut.